looking to improve your life, brush up on your personal growth techniques, you are in the right place. Welcome to Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Life's Little Lessons. Today, I have a lady. She's been an educator for over 25 years and has just recently, within the last month, as at the time of the recording of the show, has actually started her own business. Her name is Emily Penrod, and she has a company that is called Navigating Education. She's, again, she's been an educator for over 25 years, so this lady has been helping people, helping people learn for quite some time now. So everybody, welcome Emily to the show. Emily, thank you for being here today. Well, thank you for inviting me, Kevin. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, so, Emily, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, you said you told me in the pre-interview that you've been an educator for 25 years. Now, tell me a little bit about that. So why did you go into education? And I'm assuming your business that you have, which is called Education, education Consultant, oh, excuse me, you're, you're an education consultant, but you're, um, the name of your co- company is called Navigating Education. Why did you start this business and what did you used to teach when you were teaching? Well, I believe in the power of education to change lives. I feel very passionate about it. I, um, I, most of those 25 years were spent in special education on the secondary level, uh, junior high and high school. So I worked with students from a range of disabilities, from learning disabilities to more challenging issues like autism, bipolar disorder, um, other emotional disturbances. And I was really impressed at how some students were able to make just miraculous progress. Um, If you just looked at just the cold hard facts of the testing that they were given, what was judged to be their ability level, and they they exceeded that. They far surpassed that. And so I was naturally very intrigued with what made the difference. And so through my years of observing, I've noticed those factors that lead to student achievement. And that is exciting to me. I, I, I firmly believe that everyone is able to learn and everyone has something to offer. And I'm excited and thrilled to see opportunities for even the most severely disabled people to still reach at their potential and make a positive impact in the world. So that's mainly what has motivated me in my career. And this was kind of a transition. I actually started last, you know, I, I retired the end of October, but last February, I started thinking about what I wanted to do next. I wanted to have more of an impact, reach more people, and that's what led to um, retiring the end of October and then starting my own business in November. Okay, and just so you guys are aware, so I'm going to date this show a little bit. She's talking about uh, uh, the year of 2017, so October 2017 is when she retired. Uh, November 2017 is when she started her new business. Now, let me ask you something, Emily. Um, What age groups for your new business now, which age groups are you most interested in and what kind of student are you looking for? Well, K-12, I want to cover the full range. I'm looking for those students who are, are struggling with just the getting by. You know, for most families, the local public school is the best option and their kids do great there. But this isn't always the case. There are some, sometimes students need more individualized attention, a more specialized program. And so I'm looking for those families that are feeling that need and are and need need some guidance and help in finding it are just watching their child not thriving in school beginning to hate it and beginning to feel badly about themselves beginning to feel like they're a failure so i'm looking for those families committed to their child to education who would like some help, and in some cases, an advocate. Sometimes 
they need someone to represent them in making sure their child's educational needs are being met. Okay. So are you going to be doing this more like as a, on a tutoring basis, a homeschooling basis? Uh, basis? Uh, what, is it, what is your plan uh, with that, with your business? I'll be uh, an independent education consultant. So in other words, I would be working for families. And it would begin with a very comprehensive assessment of what, what, where the child is, you know, what their strengths are, what their challenges are, what they do well, what they need more support in doing, and how they learn, what motivates them. And then from that, we can determine what educational setting is best for them, if not the local public school. And sometimes that will work if they are able to communicate with the, the professionals at that school to understand their child's needs, what accommodations they need. And sometimes they need either a specialized charter school or online classes, online schools are now available for K through 12 students, or in some cases, a private school. And some parents have even elected homeschool and they teach their children themselves. So it's something, you know, the, the non-traditional school setting. Sometimes that's the best option. Okay, and I and I'm seeing that more and more, uh, and I'm sure you as well. I'm seeing that more and more where parents are doing more of the homeschooling. Uh, at least uh, so I'm not a, I'm not a parent myself, but a, a good number of my friends are, and a few of them are doing the homeschooling. Is that becoming more and more prevalent that you're seeing, or? Um, you know, I I was a homeschool parent myself. Um, before I began my teaching career. And during the time that I have been in touch with homeschooling, I haven't seen the percentage change. It's throughout across the United States. Um, as, as accurately as we can tell, it's been about three to 4% of the general population. And we don't know, there may be cases where parents are homeschooling and not reporting it to the local school district but I believe that's fairly accurate. So that total number hasn't changed, but it's still an option. Parents still, for some, it's the best option. Okay, and, let's, and then what is, because I want to get really clear, what is your role that you're looking to do as, uh, uh, as an independent education consultant? Let's say if I was a parent of a, of a child that maybe did have special needs or was struggling in school, what would be your role from day one if I was going to hire you? Okay, I offer a variety of services. Okay. If you just had a question about their individual education plan, that's a legal document that the schools write up and they form a team with you as the parent, the teacher, any professionals who are offering services to your child, and it stipulates what the goals are, what they will do, um, what supports and accommodations they will offer. And again, this is a legal document and sometimes can be very confusing to parents. So I can help them understand that document if they want an advocate to go to the meetings. Some, some parents feel intimidated when they go to a, you know, a, a professional's office and you know, maybe they only have a high school degree themselves and they feel, so sometimes it helps to have an advocate go with them just to make sure that the best interest of the child are represented and addressed. So I can provide that service. If they feel like they just haven't found the right school setting, I'm familiar with a number of schools. I've toured them, interviewed staff, and I can, again, after this extensive evaluation, make recommendations to say, you know, your child has an interest in art. Here's a program with a fantastic art department. They could help, you know, that would help motivate your child. I can make recommendations for the parents to check and to help them find the best school setting for their child. Okay. And sometimes in parenting, I think there are always challenges in parenting. 
but especially when you have a child with special needs. I can help them with the latest research on what has been effective in um, getting your child's cooperation. Okay. We're well past the, the era when you just told your child what to do and they did it. Right. We know now they were actually selling our children on why, why this behavior will be beneficial to them and we're gaining their cooperation. And there, there've been, there's been a lot of research on, especially with autism, on what strategies will motivate the child, what ones will help them believe in themselves and, and have that drive to, to reach their potential. Okay. Well, oh, fantastic. I mean, it's, and, and your services are ma mainly local. Uh, I, I don't even know which town, where, where do you live right now? I'm, I'm, I, I live in Orem, Utah, Orem, but okay. because we have Zoom, Skype, I can actually help parents anywhere in the United States. So if they, I could attend an IEP meeting by phone. Okay. Um, and confer with them by phone or Skype or Zoom or some okay. other way. So, so I, 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 I could help parents. I'm, and I am most familiar with the special ed laws in the United States. So I could help. And you've been the whole 25 years of your education was always special ed or was that just something you fell into? No, um, there was one year I taught sixth grade language arts, but the rest of the time I was in special ed. And my, the last eight years, I worked at a residential treatment facility for at-risk youth. So I got a much deeper, more intensive training in students with emotional um, disturbances okay. and how to help meet those needs and just something interesting I think should be noted we okay. found the most effective way to treat depression two things exercise and engaging the student in a service project take them to the local animal shelter get them serving somewhere else and it makes a difference okay so Emily, let me ask you this then, um, why did you get into special education? What, what was the draw for you to go into there? Well, you know, I think I've always had a soft spot for, you know, the ones that didn't quite fit in, maybe because when I was growing up, I didn't always feel like I fit in either. And, and I also, what really appealed to me is that opportunity for individualized support. You can really focus on the student and you can help them see what their strengths are and, um, and you can help them see their worth. You know, a lot of times you can help them see, maybe you struggle with math, but you have a gift with um, making friends. And there's a lot you can do in your life with the strengths that you have. That really appealed to me. Okay. It's also really exciting to see that student that, you know, if you looked at their standardized test scores, you'd say, oh, they're going to be lucky to finish high school. But to see them start developing that confidence and then not only finish high school, they go on to college, they get, you know, it, it's exciting to see someone exceed their expectations. Okay. So, so I remember growing up, there was a, a kid that was on the same street that, that, that I lived on, and he was a special a special needs uh, kid. And um, he was the only one that I remember uh, specifically. Uh, he rode the, the school bus and uh, that, we, that we rode, and he was, a, he was, I think he was right about my age, but he was like two or three years grades behind me. Uh -huh. So, um, so he was held back. And this was back in the 80s. That's when I, the, the, I mean, the 70s and 80s. And that's when I was uh, in, in school. And I remember him specifically. I don't remember what his, um, what his challenge was, but I remember he always said uh, when he got on the school bus, he had one specific seat and he would, you know, he, he would freak out a little bit as nobody, um, somebody sat in that seat. Now, most, for the most part, everybody knew him. His name was Chuck. Everybody knew him and everybody, you know, people understood and people even actually, even, some people would start would pick on him and other people on the bus would, would intervene. <laughs> yes. 
That's good. Um, but I, I have no idea whatever happened to him. But it was you know, I, I, I do remember that that he he was in the special ed uh, uh, education classes. So, um, but yeah, I would just because I, I just remember I just remembering that. So I could pause this if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, now you, we've, we know that you're just now starting your business. You're, you're just now getting this thing going. Could you tell me about, uh, about that process? How, uh, when you made that decision to start your own business, what was it a difficult decision for you to make to start doing this on your own uh, outside of the standardized uh, public schools? It wasn't difficult. It was gradual. It began with just this vague desire to support families and parents. I, when I worked at the residential treatment center, we, I, I was familiar with education consultants and how they would work one-on-one -on -one with families and, and offer that support to some of the most discouraging and distressing cases. And so that idea kind of grew. I, I started writing a book. Um, I started my own pod podcast show, just trying to reach out to parents and give them some encouragement. You know, parents get a lot of criticism if you're, especially you know, if your your child with special needs misbehaves in in public, they get a lot of angry looks, and you know, people aren't always as compassionate towards individuals with special needs. Um, but so it was a gradual process. I actually was writing the book while I was still working full time. But um, I, I just remember reaching and, and thinking about, okay, so when do I want to retire? It, it felt like standing on a, on a high dive. And I, I remember coming to the conclusion, I have been standing here for some time looking down it's time to just go ahead <laughs> and take the leap and i i felt like it was a smooth transition i had the opportunity to train my replacement i was able to contact all of the students and their parents that i worked with and explain what i was doing and so that that transition went smooth then came the nitty gritty of, all right, now, how do I attract clients? And not realizing that if you're in business, you're in marketing, right? Mm -hmm. It's always about marketing. <laughs> yes. And realizing, you know, I don't know much about marketing. Maybe I know quite a bit about education, but now I need to learn a lot more about marketing. Mm -hmm. And that was probably my biggest challenge is... How do I get my name out? Okay, and that's that's going to be true with anybody that's starting a business is is getting that uh, is getting your name out there. Now, there's different ways that you can do it. Obviously, one is are you local based or are you online based? Now, in, if you're local based, then of course it's going to be going to your different networking functions and uh, joining different masterminds and you know doing that kind of stuff. So you that's when you're go out there and you're handing out your business card and you have to in many ways um you have to see where are you, where would your potential clients be for an example you may go to a pta meeting you may go to uh, at different schools um just so that hey this is what i do if you want extra in your case extra um, guidance for your child outside of the, uh, the the core curriculum that he or she's going to school but now if you're doing online then it's all about getting your getting your that exposure um one of the reasons i do the podcast is is part of my marketing mm -hmm. that's and I, i'm gonna go to, and for those of you that are out there listening to the show that are thinking about doing blogs or uh, video blogs uh just like uh oh i just released that episode with a gentleman by the name of andrew matthews and he's all about he built his business on video blogs it's known as vlog, vlogging the podcast that I'm doing is not only to get my name out there. Uh, it is also because I, I don't know, because I'm, I'm also an entrepreneur coach. So when I say I'm in, interviewing Emma, Emma Lou here, Emma Lou, Emma Lou here, um, she's she may share this podcast with other people that I don't know. 
and then it could go through the whole series of other things. That's why I'm doing an interview show. Um, but also it helps me with my SEO, believe it or not, because by having a blog or any kind of type content on your website and you're saying you're updating this on a weekly basis, you're writing a new blog or in my case, doing a podcast with the, the description, the description is basically my blog. And that gives, that helps with uh, Google search engine saying, okay, you've got relevant content constantly being put onto your website. So that helps, that helps with your SEO. It helps when people are typing in those keywords that helps them find you. So it's, I mean, there's, there's reasons behind all of this. So this podcast, even though it's an interview, I don't want to find out more about what she does. It is also about me exposing myself. So for those of you out there that are just getting started with a business, um, starting a podcast or a blog, I think is one of the most important things that you can do. So, and I'm glad, and I applaud you for having your own podcast. Could you tell me a little bit about that? What, what kind of a podcast do you have? How long have you been running it? And what is it about? Well, I started it in March, and it's on iTunes. The name is In Support of Families. And um, I had some fun with that because I took the picture of my middle son and his family and put that family on the cover of my podcast. So not only do I get to show off the grandkids. So, um, and this is geared towards parents. I'm talking about any concerns. Um, you know, when your child doesn't want to do homework, if your child feels some school anxiety, um, how to communicate with your teacher, different topics that would appeal to parents of school age children, different concerns they would have. So this is just you, you sharing information? Are you interviewing people? Are you doing both? Or what are you doing? Yes. Um, I've had some where I, I, my most recent one, I interviewed a second grade teacher who worked at a charter school. Okay. And she was talking about the communication she has with parents and why she feels it's beneficial. I've interviewed uh, parents and students who've attended some alternative, alternative schools. And then I've also had podcasts where I just gave information. I've done a little of both. Okay, because with, with, with this show, Life's Little Lessons here, I'm, I'm calling this season two, which is all interview-based, but in, in our pre-interview, I was talking to Emma Lou, and she listened to one or two of my season one, which is all just informational. It's just me talking into the, actually into my headset microphone, into the computer, so that's all it was. Sometimes the shows were two or three minutes long, and sometimes they were 15 or 20 minutes long, so they're uh, inconsistent as far as the length was concerned. But yes, I, I applaud you for that, you, that you're doing both. That's phenomenal. That is absolutely great. Okay, so um, now uh, I'm going to go into because we've talked about some of your successes. Oh, let's talk about uh, let's actually let's talk about those things. What were some of your early successes that you've seen so far with the starting of your business? Well, I think the thing that I'm most proud of is my book. Okay. I I wrote I wrote a book, Navigating the Educational System: Five Strategies to Get the Best for Your Child. It's on sale on Amazon, and that was over the, the process of about nine months writing, spending 30 to 40 minutes. I'd get up early in the morning and write before I went to work, and I was able to put in the, my experiences, what I've learned in my years as a homeschool parent. A, I've taught at a charter school. I've taught at a private school and a public school. And I was able to write about that. Another thing that was very intriguing to me is a little bit of the history of education, public school education in the United States. So there's a chapter about that too, and a chapter about choosing the right school for your child. Another one on communicating with the teacher, with the school professionals. And I put a lot of myself into that book. So that's mm -hmm. that I would consider that a major success. I've also enjoyed the podcast show as well. Okay. But I, the most effort went into the book. Yes, writing a book is, um, it, it can be very challenging. Actually, I, I've written two. You, oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, so the first book wasn't, didn't put, wasn't too much effort into it because uh, it was a book on, it was called Lease Options Made Easy, which is a real estate book. You know, my, uh -huh. my, uh, my former life, I was a, also a realtor and my specialty was lease options. So I actually, my, that book, 
um, years prior, I wrote a whole bunch of frequently asked questions you know, about the lease option thing. So yeah. I would say probably half of the book, which is my FAQs. I just repurposed the FAQs and put them into the book. Which is very helpful. And, um, and that's where, that's why it was so, so hard to write that one. And, it, and that one, I also made it into a narrative. Um, because I wanted, I had fictitious characters talking to each other. And that way, instead of just giving out facts, which can be a little bit dry, especially in real estate, um, I made it to where people had different opinions on how to do how, how the lease option could be done. So you know that way you could follow the, the personalities of the characters, and so therefore you could have conflicting uh, viewpoints in the same. Why are you still delivering that same information? Uh -huh. Uh, my second book, kind of like yourself, that one was called Designing Your Own Destiny. And that book took me about 11 months to write. And uh -huh. I put more than 30 minutes a day into it. I was probably <laughs> putting four to five hours a day into it. Wow. And, uh, or when I was hot on it. Um, uh -huh. Because on that one, and I actually developed an online training program called uh, How to Become a Self-Published Author. Uh, which ends up being a 39-step program. So I go e everything from uh, your table of contents, goes into what goes on to your, uh, your title page, which goes on to your copyright page, because there's a lot that goes up just on the copyright page that most people are, 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 may not even be aware of. And then I go through how, how to write the book. And the, the book, the, 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 the most amount of time in, in writing the book, which is probably like four or five months of actual writing, I covered in one video. So it's, it's basically, you're not going to watch all 39 videos and have a completed book, but you will go through everything from, okay, here's chapter six, write your first draft. Don't, don't, turn, don't turn back and fix anything and just write your first draft. Yeah. Then you write your second draft. In my case, I wrote a third draft. Then I wrote a fourth draft. And then I went through three more drafts with an editor. So uh -huh. that's why it took so long because it was going going back and forth doing all of that. But I applaud you for writing a book. For those of you out there that are writing nonfiction uh, books, um, that's I applaud you because there's so much effort that goes into that. So congratulations on your book and the fact that you you say you have it online right now on Amazon. Yeah, it's it's on Amazon. And you went through the self published route, or did you go through a publisher? Yeah, yeah. Self published. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I self published. Okay, well, that's that's phenomenal that, that you did that. M both my books are self-published, and um, and you said, and what's the name of your podcast? In support, in support of families. families. And you said you've been doing that since March. Yes. Oh, okay, cool. So for those of you that are, are, want to listen to more of what she has to offer, go to iTunes, and you can definitely uh, start listening to some of her some of her re recordings. Now, we've talked about your successes, and we've talked a little bit about some of your fears. What are some of the challenges that you've had to overcome in, in getting your business started? Well, maybe it's to be expected for my age group, but it's technology. I'm, I'm using, you know, a Facebook group. I'm, you know, I'm using the internet and it does not come intuitively. I've, I've had, there've been several times when I've had to have my grandchildren come over and walk me through a process. So for me, learning the technology, just learning, taking what I want and converting it into what will be effective has been the greatest challenge. And, that, and I'm going to say, because um, I'm 50 years old myself, and I consider myself somewhat uh, uh, tech savvy. But yes, there's still things out there that I have no clue how it works. I, I would like to learn, but I'm just not familiar. Like my biggest challenges would be, say, learning Instagram or Pinterest and what's the purpose of these? But I know uh, my age demographic of people that would be hiring me would be using those platforms. So I have to learn the platforms where my customers are, are, are hanging out at. Same with you, because if you're dealing with people with uh, a six year old or seven year old child, yeah. or eight year old yeah. child, that means that parent is probably gonna be in their twenties, maybe their early thirties. And where, yeah. do, where do the 20 and 30 year olds hang out? Well, they're not gonna hang out on MySpace. That went away years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, and so, yeah. those, so, so those are and, your biggest challenges? Yes, and I'm looking forward to the point where I can outsource that, to be honest. <laughs> you know, as I am building up income, 
that's my number one. I'm gonna <laughs> I, outsourcing the technology or hiring somebody to do it. I mean, that's there's a there's a book out there. Uh, I recommend two books to almost all entrepreneurs, uh, especially if they're as they're getting started. Uh, one book is called The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Oh. Uh, it came out a few weeks, a few years ago, and he turned his 80 hour a week job into a four hour a week job. And one of the one of the things that he has in his book is this acronym, this, and it's the word DEAL, D-E-A-L. And what that stands for is, and you're kind of hitting the nail on the head there, Emily, is the D, it stands for what can you delegate? Uh -huh. What can you have somebody else do? Uh, the E stands for eliminate. What can you, what are you doing that is actually not doing anything for your business? So what can you get rid of this? It's like the busy work that you think is important, but it's not important at all. Uh, the A stands for automate. What can you put on automation? Like, let's say you're, you, you post on Facebook, you know, put a post on Facebook, but you wanted to go on your Twitter account. You wanted to go on these other accounts. Well, what resources like Zapier or if then, then that could you use that you know, a post could be automatically shared to other accounts. So that's would be an example of an automation. And then the L, which is actually comes after the D, E, and A has already been accomplished, is now, so what are you going to do when now you're with all the free time? So L stands for liberate. So what are you going to do when you have that free time? For an example, if you're doing your podcast, and I do a lot of editing on my podcast, which is about four to five hours per episode, and I'm hiring somebody else to do that allows me more time to go out and network instead of me sitting on the computer trying to take out all the ums and uhs and you knows and all that stuff out of the out of the audio version of this show. So so that's that's important. And then the other book I highly recommend that people read um, is the word is the book called E Myth Revisited. And the E stands for does not stand for electronic like email. E stands for entrepreneur. And I, I'm assuming you probably have not read either one of those books. And you know the the uh, the four hour work work week does sound familiar, but I haven't. Now I want to. Yes, this four is hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss. Yes. And, and the E Myth. E Myth Revisited. Now E Myth came out in, e -Myth this, in the nineteen seventies, I think, okay. but E Myth Revisited came out in early two thousands. And just to break it down, um, and I've said this on a couple other shows, is on uh, for the E Myth. When I read that book, I was actually angry after I read the first couple of chapters. Oh, really? And because it basically said, uh, and they used the case uh, uh, of an of an a baker. So this one, this wonderful woman, she's a great baker. She worked for this company, and there, therefore, she decided she wanted to start her own bakery uh, bakery business. Uh -huh. And the book basically says. If, uh, if you're going to start a business that's in the same field that you were an expert in, you know, when you're working for somebody else, the chances of you failing is much higher than if you were to also start a business you had no idea how, that you have no expertise in it whatsoever. Yeah. And it's like, and it, because that's why I, I, I like people to read the book is because people are starting businesses that are in the same field that they were in. And it's because the E-Myth breaks every business down into th there's three different mindsets in, in every business. Uh -huh. There's the technician. That's the person that goes out there and does all the grunt work. You know, like say if you're, if you're a baker, you know, start your own bakery business and therefore you're, 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 you're baking. Okay. You're doing what you, what you did. Uh -huh. The second level of a, of a business is the manager. It's the person who handles all the employees. It's the one that keeps all the projects going, get, you know, getting all of that together. And the third one, which is why most, uh, most of those kinds of businesses fail, is there's the entrepreneur. That's the dreamer. That's the person that says, hey, let's go and do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And, and, and nine times out of 10, the technician says, that will never work because it, it, it doesn't work that way. So the entrepreneur is the dreamer, is the one that's building the business. So if it makes sense to you, if, if you were leaving a technician job and you go into starting a business as a technician, you have no experience as the manager, you have no experience as the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. That's where like, and I use the case of Dan Marino, a, a NFL quarterback, and he opened up his own high, high end uh, restaurant. What does a football player know about running a high end restaurant? 
absolutely <laughs> nothing. But uh -huh. because of that, did he go and hire uh, uh, the, the, the top chefs? Did he hire the, uh, the top uh, uh, managers? Did he go hire the, the, you know, the great servers and, and waiters and stuff like that? Uh -huh. So did not DC were. <laughs> yes. Yes, um, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. So uh, how do you recommend uh, Emily to read this book? All you uh, listeners out there that are listening to the program, definitely read those two books. I, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So, well, um, and let me see what how, how are we doing on time, okay? The So I, I know you're kind of new into the business, but share with the, the listeners here, what have you learned uh, being a business owner that you would, that you could impart to somebody else? I know you only been in business for a month or so, but what would you, what lessons have you learned that you would actually impart to somebody that is just starting out? Well, I found it most helpful. You know, first I thought maybe I shouldn't tell anyone I'm doing this. You know, what if what if what if I what if I fail? And then, but I when I told people what I was doing, I got so much help and support. It just seemed like everywhere I turned, there was someone who could recommend a book or a program or just an idea I hadn't thought of. So I would recommend that you share your goals and accept help and you will find it, you know, and, and just accept, you know, I, I think um, someone else, I think said it better, but it's good to be the dumbest person in the room because you learn, you have so much more opportunity to learn. So that would be, and perseverance. I think that, you know, when you hit those roadblocks, if you don't have that commitment, that dream that you want to bring to reality, I am attempting a few things that have not been done traditionally in education. So I, I do feel that entrepreneurial spirit, but um, stick it out, that perseverance, and okay. surround yourself with people who are going to keep encouraging you. And that's the thing is that when you uh, when you share that you're starting a new business, especially somebody said like that's, that's Emma Lou, that's um, you're you're working for corporate America. Now you're starting your own thing. A lot of your friends are probably still going to be corporate corporate America thinkers. So yeah. be be careful. Uh, uh, definitely share what you do because you never know who's uh, who's going to be a client or who could recommend a client a client to you. But I would I would say if you have got those naysayers in your life. Don't oh, yeah. listen to those naysayers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I should have discounted that. The, the people who you know are open and supportive. You're right. And, you know, I haven't heard much of the naysayers, but they are there. And you're right. You can't listen to them. Sometimes the naysayer, the biggest one, is in your own head. Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to hold on a second, okay? Okay. Okay, now we're back. Um, and I do want to uh, top this off by saying, be careful who you listen to, because you definitely want to share it with everybody. However, um, be, be we're leery of when a person that may be a naysayer, that, that, that may be trying to take you back down, say, hey, why don't you just go back and work for corporate America again? So don't listen to those people, but only listen to those people that are actually there to support you. Would you agree? I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree with that. Okay, so as we're about to start wrapping things up here, and we already talked about, um, you just talked about your some tidbits of information. Um, as you're growing your business and you have your idea going on, what do, where do you see yourself in say 12 months or 24 months from now? In 12 months, I see myself as having at least 10 clients, and that's just a beginning. Okay. I would like to start with 10 families that I am working with, that I'm able to help. Okay. Um, that's, that's my big goal. Okay, and, and then 24 months from now, two years from now? Well, by then, I want to be in a position to open it up to other education consultants where I'm moving more into a management role. Okay. I would be going out, doing the public presentations, explaining our business, and then we could handle more clients. There would be more, um, maybe from different parts of the country. Okay. So, and 
And I would love to get to that level of influence that I could address legislative bodies on public education. Okay. I, I think there are improvements that could be made there. Okay, fantastic. And well, that, that's, that's really commendable because I know you, you're working with people with special needs. So that's, that's incredible. Now, uh, I just had a curiosity, and this is kind of off track what I was normally going. Do you work with any adults that may have uh, special needs kind of educated? Like I said, maybe they had a head injury and they're 45 years old or anything like that. Is that something you're interested in or is that completely separate because you're more focused on schools? To, to be honest with you, I have not considered that, but that's a very real, you know, situation. I, I, you know, that now that's something I, I think that I would, right now I'm focusing on K through 12 because that's what I'm most familiar with, mm -hmm. but I see that there would be a need there too. I know that there are some vocational rehabilitation, there are some government services, I don't know how well those needs are being met. That's that's a population I would need to become better acquainted with. Okay, good. Because for me, uh, I, I relate things to movies because I'm a big uh, big movie buff. And when you were talking about special needs, the, the first movie, a uh, movie came to my mind, and it was a Harrison Ford movie called Regarding Henry. I don't know if you remember that movie. It's, it's from probably back in the 90s. And it's where he was a, a top-notch lawyer and you know, very – tough you know uh kind of almost mean kind of a person and then he gets shot in the head at a uh, at a convenience store robbery so he okay. became this person that barely knew who he was he was a completely different personality that he had and then he was trying to re reintegrate himself back into his former self and he, he didn't like his his former self so uh -huh. so that's that's why because um he he, he it's just that was just a movie that came to my mind so anyway yeah yeah um yeah. Well, Emily, um, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Do you have a website that you can send them to so they can uh, contact you? I do. I have a website, in insupportoffamilies.com, and I'm also on Facebook. Um, my name, Emily Penrod. I have a business page, In Support of Families, and a Facebook group. Uh, K through 12 parents, so they could reach me on Facebook or on my website. Okay. On iTunes. Well, of course. Yeah, this, this, this broadcast is going to be on iTunes, and your broadcast is also yes. on iTunes. Yes. And what was the name of your show again, please? So, so they, in, so, in Support of Families. In Support of Families. And you also have a book that was called Navigating the Educational System? Yes. Fantastic. So you can find her also online, obviously multiple areas on Facebook. You can find her on iTunes. You'll find her on the Kevin A. Dunlap page because she, she'll be part of one of the shows that we have here. And she has uh, her own website, which is in support of families.com. And I know you're doing some upgrades to the website. So by the time somebody's yep. actually listening yep. to the show, you'll have different features and things like yep. that. So definitely go back and check yep. back often. Um, if, if this is something that really uh, resonates, or resonates uh, with you. Well, Emily, I want to say thank you for being on the show. It has been a great pleasure. Um, any last words that you have for, for the audience before we say goodbye to everybody? No, I just firmly believe that everyone should pursue their dreams. Just step up and become your best self. Look for someone to help. Look for some way to serve. I think that's, and sometimes the worst naysayer is in your own head. So... Sometimes you need to turn tune that one out too. <laughs> all right. Well, very, very well said. Because I think all of us goes through those, through, through those trials and tribulations of self doubt. So, yeah. um, so yes, don't don't give in to that. Just def definitely, like she said, persevere and take that leap. Take that take that leap of faith and and and, and jump and go and go for it. Well, Emily, thank you very much, and I do uh, well, uh, thank you for wanting to. Definitely want to thank you for being on the show. This has been a great insight. And and um, I look forward to uh, chatting with you at another time. Well, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, my, my pleasure. Ready, 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 ready.
Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit KevinADunlap.com, Facebook.com slash KevinADunlap.author, and on Twitter at Kevin A. Dunlap. We'll catch you on the next episode of Life's Little Lessons.